So we've already talked about how to have a separate file for our body that has all of our body high res and body low res, and we can bake back and forth from character creator to ZBrush. And then we've gone through and we've done a, another pass where we have a separate file for our gear that has a gear high res, a gear game res. And we can bake between those files, and then we can export out a, uh, a game res file for our gear, drop it into our scene file as an accessory, move it into place, uh, and then you know continue transferring skin weights, putting our accessories and bones together, all the setup that would be involved in making a game res character. There's two problems with that. Number one, we lose parity from whenever we make changes or movement to our game res mesh, our high res mesh doesn't update. Now, if you're just gonna bake through our high res ZBrush file to our game res file um, and just update materials and textures that way, that's totally fine. Uh, if you're doing something like a 3D print file where you actually need to toss back and forth, you know, changing the verts on the low res back to the high res, uh, you can set up parity in this way for a game res mesh. But basically what you would need is having your game res attached or part of the subdivision history of your high res mesh. So it's not impossible. Uh, it's just not generally how those workflows tend to go. So that's why I wanted to show the game res part first so that you know you get a traditional game res pipeline now, and this one's a little bit more new fangled or character creator specific but is also great for 3d printing now it's very similar it, to this playlist right here so there's already a zbrush mesh and reillusion character creator workflow if you don't plan on doing any facial animation or using the CC topology, you can just use this playlist and take an arbitrary ZBrush creation body, topologize however you want, and send that over to Character Creator, rig it, uh, pose it, send it back to ZBrush, update your high res file, and then 3D print that result. Uh, if you do want facial animation and you are using the CC topology, I would do what I'm about to show you now. And again, just to be clear, this isn't going to be a, you know, setting key registration and how to clean up your 3D print files necessarily. If you want more information on that, if you go to my playlist tab and you look for the big blue genie in here and go to the view full playlist, this is every live stream I've done. Some of them show up in live. Some of them are just videos that I've copied from the Pixelogic channel where I do my other live stream. So this is all of them. And you'll see there is a character creator in 3D printing expression wrinkles, swapping clothing, and more. So if you want to know more about that process, I'll have this link in the file description as usual. So let's talk through what these files are, how they're set up, and why I made the decisions that I made. And if you have any follow-up questions, you can post them in the description as well if you can think of a better way to do this or a more elegant solution. So we need, of course, ZBrush open, and this is our file. And essentially what I've done, as opposed to what we did previously, which is export out our high res for just the gear, have a game res for just the gear, and then bake between those. I now have my CC body here. So here's our upper T tongue, eye, and CC base body in this file. And then I appended all of the gear to this file. Now, there is a caveat to this and something very important. I'm going to put these links in the description as well. In order for this to work, we still have the limitation of 300,000 quads, 600,000 triangles uh, limitation for character creator to move all that stuff around. So in my playlist here, if you go to ZBrush 2023, this has a whole section on Ziri Mesh and Project History Refresher. This is just a way for you to get a low res subdivision for all of your objects and allow you to have subdivision history so that you can always send everything over to character creator and stay underneath that poly limit. So let me explain that a little bit better. Right now we have, uh, if I go through here, I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to turn everything off. So hold down shift, turn off the eyeball, and I'm going to turn on the base body and all of these pieces above here. All of these pieces here are just that goblin body. And those correspond to, I'm going to go ahead and say file open. We're going to open up the corresponding. I have a, a goblin 3D print CC file and I have a corresponding ZBrush file. So we're going here to file open. I have a goblin 3D print Z project file. So I have two files that I can toss back and forth that are already set up. So the base body here in ZBrush is part of that poly count. This is my character creator base body. Now, luckily, 
You can see I have his body selected and he's 13 million points. I'm not sending 13 million points over to Character Creator like we've already talked about. When I hit Go Z, it's going to drop it down to Subdivision Level 1. And these are the polygons it sends over, only 13,000. It's great. Uh, same thing for your gear. So if I hold down Shift and then turn on the eyeball to turn everything else on, if I go down here to Subtool All Low, this is what is being sent over to Character Creator. So if I want to get a quick poly count on my objects, I can go over here to Merge Visible. Again, go to All Low, then Merge Visible, and then it's going to put out a merged version of all of the visible subtools into their own uh, tool in your palette here. And you'll see this is 226,000 active points. It's heavy, uh, and there's probably room for improvement in here, but you can see that it'll it can still be handled by... Uh, character creator. So that's one thing we need to take care of is make sure we're under the poly count. So let's go ahead and delete that out of our stack here and then we'll go back to our working file. Another thing we need to take care of, and this is also covered in the uh, ZBrush and Reillusion character creator workflow. Again, when we were doing Avatar Aang and all this cloth that's moving around. Uh, same thing we did in the previous video where we had a you know cloth turned on for his loincloth. If we're going to send over any file that's going to have cloth, we need to make sure that this has a has UVs. So if I go in here and morph UV, you can see if I go into solo mode, it does have UVs on it. So I'll go ahead and unmorph those UVs. And if you need to UV them, of course, you can go into Z plugin, UV master and use that. And that will allow us to send over a mesh again. And this mesh also has subdivision history. So if we go to subdivision level six. It has a high res mesh. When I send it over to Character Creator, this is what gets sent over. This is what gets posed, you know, and animated. And then when I want to update my 3D print file, I can send all those changes back and uh, we'll, we'll be good to go for our uh, asset here. So let's look at my subtools here and see how I have them set up. And I'm going to explain this as simply as I can. We already know there's three types of assets that we like to take into Character Creator. That's accessories, clothing, and then cloth items. And they all need, um, well, they're all bound to the skeleton in certain ways. So accessories, what I tried to do was combine all of those objects together and make them have a high res that can have a subdivision down all the way to the lowest res to send over to Character Creator. For the clothing items that go, and those are bound to a single joint. For the clothing items that are bound across multiple joints in the body, I didn't try to combine everything into shirts and pants and make that all work because the shirts had rivets that only had two subdivision levels. Then they had gloves that had three and then boots that had four, uh, other parts that had five. So what I basically did was for all of the clothing parts that weren't accessories or cloth items like loincloth and headcloth, um, break those down into or categorize those into all of their subdivision levels and then combine those all together. So all my subdiv, all my objects on my body for the clothing items that were subdivision level two, combine those together. All the ones that were subdivision level three, combine those together in the one object. And again, they're bound across multiple bones. They don't need to be part of a single set of an item that I'm going to put in a library later. Uh, and then finally, cloth items. So things that have to be single-sided, have UVs, uh, like the loincloth and the headcloth, those get sent over separately. So again, accessories all combined together, one subdivision level, if I could. Clothing uh, combined into subdivision levels. So that's why I have SDiv two, three, four, five, and six, and then finally cloth items that are UV'd and sent over to character creator. If I go to subdivision level five for the helmet, here it is at sub D5. And then if I go in here to polyframe, you can see I can drop all of this down and eventually it will reach subdivision level one, which will be, you know, 39,000 points, not terrible. I can send that over. I can move those verts around, send them back and they'll update those positions. And then the high res will just be part of that solution. Same thing for the axe, shoulder pad, and the pouch. Now for things that are moving with the body, what I ended up doing was, for example, I have a subdivision level two. If I go into solo mode, here's all of the little bits that have two subdivision levels, and they're just basically rivets. So subdivision level two, so they're a little smoother, subdivision level one. Those are all part of one subtool that gets sent over as SDiv2. It still gets bound to the body, it still gets weighted to the skeleton, you know, they just, these are just objects that only have two subdivision levels. I could continue subdividing them and merge them together with like a sub D level five product, but eh, I'm just going to leave them alone for now. There's no reason to do that. Subdivision level three, if I go into solo mode, here's all of the objects that I had in my scene that had uh, three levels of subdivision. So I just merged them all together. It maintained my subdivisions here. So subdivision level one, two, and three, like so. Same thing for subdivision level four. 
all of these drop down. Here's subdivision level one, all the way up to subdivision level four. So essentially what I did was just go through and take, you know, all of the pieces that had the same subdivision level, merge those together, you know, all high, merged all my subdivision levels together that were the same subdivision level, and then put them into one object. And here's all my subdivision level six objects. You can see they get pretty low on the low res, but then when I go to high res, you know, they got all their detail in there. And that's about it. And then just ensuring that, you know, like here's the backpack, subdivision level one, I can still go up to subdivision level four or five for my high res, whatever it is, and then drop it back down for the lowest. So with this all set up, if I go all high, here is my 3D print file with all its glorious detail. And then if I wanna go and pose him out, what I'll do is I'll go into character creator, I'll open up. I mean, in this case, I already have a file open and ready to go if you don't. Uh, what you would basically do would be open up. And in fact, you know what? We'll step through this. We have our base body file here that's already synced. Let's go ahead and sync this up. So in character creator, I'm going to go to file open. We're going to ignore what we have here. I'm going to go back to where we just had the body. So if you're just starting where we kind of left off, we have a base body that has posable face animation, uh, no gear yet. But now we have a ZBrush file with a bunch of gear. First, I'm gonna go ahead and link up my file. So I'm gonna hold down shift. I'm gonna turn off everything except for my character creator specific stuff. So I don't give it too much to think about right now. I'm just relinking the files. Preferences, go Z, clear cache files, say okay. I'm going to say go Z visible over to character creator. And again, the only thing that's visible is my character creator body stuff. This is gonna be update. We're going to say current pose update. So now character creator and my ZBrush file are synced up. All right, there we go. So we're, we're relinked back up. So we have our ZBrush file. Again, we just had the body and just these objects showing, basically this character creator stuff showing. We had our character creator file where we were uh, texturing our object. And now we wanna add our 3D printable accessories and clothing uh, to this file. Now we've already talked about how to set up accessories and clothing. This is no different, only instead of exporting on an FBX file and going in here to create accessory, we're just gonna go Z our accessories over. So back in ZBrush, now that we're linked up, we can hold down shift, turn off the eyeball, turn everything back on. And now I'm gonna say go Z all, make sure everything's uh, labeled appropriately or named appropriately and it all has a low res file so when we send over these low res files it won't go over a maximum so again we're going to say go z all now and character creator is smart enough to set these ones to update so these are already update and then sdiv2 all of these it has set to create cloth um, which I actually do want to use I want to use create cloth for all the subdivision objects the loin cloth and the helmet cloth uh, for the backpack, I'm going to switch this over to create accessory, the axe, the helmet, and the shoulder, plat, shoulder pad. I'm going to choose create accessory and the pouch. So all of these, I'm going to say create accessory. For all of these, I'm going to say create cloth. And then for the skin, we'll just set that they update, even though it's not going to make any changes. Again, just leave that on update. Uh, current pose is fine. So we're good to go. Let's go ahead and hit update. And that's going to bring in all of our low res files. Uh, that are associated with a high-res object in ZBrush. And now what we're going to do is bind everything so we can animate it around. And then when we go Z back over, all those low-res vert changes will be updated to ZBrush and bring along all the high-res detail through the power of subdivision history. So let's go ahead and zoom out here. And you'll see... Everything is pretty much placed where it should be. Some of the stuff does need to be moved. The good thing about this workflow is I can still maintain parity between my low res game res file, if you tend to work that way, and your high res file. So even though we're using this for 3D printing, if you can figure out a way for your workflow to have your low res game res files go Zable between character creator and ZBrush, you can always go Z to update those vert positions and always maintain parity. So if you ever want to make a change on the low res game res, you can go Z that back over to ZBrush and update your high res file. It's awesome to maintain parity through your workflow um, from your high res to your uh, game res. But in some cases, it may not be that worthwhile, but I'll leave that up to you. In 3D printing land, it's totally worth it. However, again, the, the helm, I think the 
accessories kind of came in. The clothing, I think, came in in the right position. The accessories came in a little bit off. So we can simply move those back into place. Just go ahead and select all the accessories here. Hit W on your keyboard. We'll move those into place. So even though we are moving these, all we have to do is, again, eventually we're going to select all these objects, go Z it back over. It will update those vert positions. And again, we'll have parity back as opposed to our previous workflow, where when we move those, you know, we went through the create accessories route. When we move those verts, our high res had no idea that they moved. So we can't bake through um, with that kind of workflow. But this one we'll be able to if we wanted to. But we're not really baking. We're just using this as a 3D printable uh, file. So we'll go ahead and move these things back into position here. And just like we di just did, uh, all we have to do is go through. These should already have cloth assigned when we brought it in as cloth. If you want to, you know, if you had like your loincloth here, if you wanted to say, hey, uh, transfer skin weights and use a different, uh, it will use the dress template instead of the default template, which is what it used for all these. You can certainly do that. And you'll see that'll go ahead and update. Uh, well, <laughs> it didn't change the uh, icon, but you know we can use a different template. So if you do have a, a low res that you didn't want to use default on for like gloves or boots, you can just do a retransfer of skin weights and choose the appropriate uh, template. So for the rest of these, so the clothing should be good to go. If we want to go ahead and test it, we can say motion. Now let's go ahead and just do a male walk. So we haven't done any accessory. We haven't set the pivot or the joint assignment here. So we can see, yeah, the helmet, all the accessories kind of floating around. Uh, the hip accessory is okay. Uh, that one doesn't need to change, but the clothing is looking great. So motion, pose, a pose. Let's go ahead and fix the accessories. Like I said, the pouch is already assigned to hip. If you want to set the pivot, if I hit W, it's down here at the world zero. We can just pick this middle option, put the pivot up there on the object. Uh, shoulder pad. Let's see, it's, yeah, base hip. Let's go ahead and say pick parent. We'll choose the bone in that vicinity. It didn't change, so let's go ahead and choose, just look for it manually. We're basically looking for our upper arm. And again, that's going to inherit the move scale and rotate of that joint, uh, but it's not gonna align anything. So we'll go ahead and hit, uh, keep that on none. Helmet, we'll go ahead and set the pivot to middle, uh, we'll say middle bottom. And then again, you can go into the edit pivot button and move this into place. Again, it's not any different than the work we've already done on our game res mesh. We're just doing it on a low res version that we CC'd over instead of imported. Uh, this is looking good. So I'm gonna go into, or go out of edit pivot mode. And then we're going to, again, scroll down, do this attach to. Um, first, we'll try pick parent. And just again, try to choose the head joint. Again, if it's not choosing joints for some reason, just go in here and grab the head joint, say okay. Now the ax is currently on his backpack. If that's where I want to end up having this file for the 3D print, I would just leave it there. Uh, but one thing I do wanna do is again, go ahead and set that pivot and pick the parent, which is gonna be spine two in this case. Say okay. And then the backpack, same deal, pick parent. Spino 2. All right, so we've got our clothing set up. We have our accessories set up. Again, if I go in here to motion, mail, walk mail, we can hit play. Everything's working okay. We do need to set up our loincloth here. So let's go back into ZBrush. We'll alt tap the loincloth, go into solo mode. Just like we did before, I'm gonna turn on colorize. You'll see we already have the poly paint on there. If you didn't, we'll just do this again real quick. I'll just do a color fill object with white. We're going to mask the area here with mask lasso. Just hold down control, go into mask lasso. Uh, we'll go ahead and mask these upper points here. Control tap to invert that mask. Control tap to blur this. We'll say, choose a black color, color, fill object. Control drag to unmask. Go down here to texture. We're going to create new from poly paint. We're gonna clone it off. We're gonna go in here to texture with that selected. Export. I'm just going to throw this on our desktop. We'll choose PNG. Loin cloth weight map. Go out of solo mode. We'll turn off colorize here. Choose a white color. Turn off our texture. And same thing for this object. Go ahead and turn uh, texture map off in the tool settings there. We'll go back to character creator. We'll say motion. 
pose a pose we will turn on uh, activate physics with the well the pouch is selected so let's turn off activate physics let's go back to our loincloth selected physics activate physics up here in our menu bar we'll turn on rigid body simulation and soft cloth simulation one thing i should have mentioned in the previous video there is wind in here so you can do hair and wind and different clothing settings in here so you can just double click those for different clothing types okay again with our loincloth selected physics activated physics turned on in our project go in here to weight map double click we'll go to our desktop loincloth weight map motion perf uh, soft physics we'll do a spin around there it is it's all weighted now you'll notice when we did this version when we went in here to texture export we didn't have to flip vertically that's because what zbrush sent over is zbrush compatible so that's something you may have to configure in your pipeline is that when you're cc'ing zbrush to character creator it will have your uvs flipped possibly so double check that uh, flipped vertically i should say but in this case, we were just able to export the textures from ZBrush without flipping vertically into Character Creator, unlike the other workflow where we exported an FBX and then brought them in as a Create Accessories. That's kind of a ZBrush flip vertical texture thing. So everything seems to be working. We have this object here. If you want, you can go into Content. If you have any animations you've got, I have, let's see, let's go down here to Motion, Human Male, Perform. Let's open up that bird cage. Uh, if it yells at you, again, go back in here to scene. Select the character base that you want. So in our case, the CC3 base plus, choose that one. And then you can apply an animation to that. You can play the animation. If you want to scrub through with cloth simulation, remember you have to go into edit project settings, which I already have open in this tab here. Uh, scroll down and under soft cloth, go in here to bake animation so now when i back this animation up and we play it will go ahead and bake the cloth animation here and then now we can pause it and scrub back and we can choose we can pinpoint a time also choose a by frame that way it'll ensure that you're getting all of the cloth simulation every single frame of it now one thing we didn't do was set up the capsules which we can do in just a second we'll go ahead and let this cache and right now it, you'll see it doesn't make that much of a difference and it doesn't have to be perfect you know if it's just a gen general movement and these wrinkles are good enough that's all you need to do you don't have to set up capsules and collision you can go and modify in zbrush any changes that you want uh, to update to this object uh, one thing i do want to talk about though uh, you'll see right now he's kind of walking through the scene if you want to you can go in here and click on this lock button that'll keep him locked to the world zero axis as the animation plays it'll still simulate the uh, cloth and everything but now his feet his world position his root motion will be kind of stuck at the world center and again since we're just doing poses for a 3d print you know i don't need him walking all over the place so that might be the better option if you did want to set up your capsules again motion pose a pose have your cc your base plus uh, selected go in here to your modify panel attribute tab scroll down until you see collision shape and then you can go and set up your collisions just like we did in the previous videos uh, i'm not going to bother doing that but this is where your capsules are and this is what you would select to go through and modify these capsules once you're done then you're all set up with collision capsules and you're ready to send your poses back to zbrush so i just going through editing and i realized now would be a really good time for you to select all of those components hit that go z button back to zbrush because remember all the accessories we had to move so go z all the accessories back to zbrush and then save that zpr file save this character create file and that's how you would set up the, that parity between your zbrush file and your pose file um with character creator uh just just wanted to throw that in there before we get into posing which we're getting into next we'll do a dance turn so we'll just play this we'll get some cloth cached and we'll just choose one of these poses to send back to zbrush perfect so i'm going to scrub back through we'll pick a cool pose that one looks pretty cool uh, if you want to update this pose while you're in here while posing is easy go through and go to your motion tab and say edit pose 
There we go. So we've got this window now. Uh, again, you have IK mode or FK mode. It doesn't matter whichever one you want to use. You can go through here and click on the little mannequin here and you can change entire fist positions by grabbing this one here. You can go through and grab your pinky and you know, and oops, you can double click this to deselect everything and then you can grab, you know, like I said, the pinky and you can make small modifications to that. Uh, go in here to the arm and you can either rotate in the viewport like so. Or like I said, you can you, if you're in uh, IK mode, you can hit W on say the wrist joint and you can move the arm around and the rest of the body will behave as you would expect. You can also go in here to FK mode, you know, and grab whatever joint you want. And if you remember, you have two different types of rotation. So if I hit E on my keyboard, that goes, it switches between parent and local. You probably want local turned on while you're in this mode, but just in case your rotation axis looks weird, hit E again and it'll probably put you in that local axis that you're looking for. Uh, so again, we're updating the uh, pose here. And the other power of this too, is we can update the facial expression. So instead of having to go into ZBrush and dial in a facial expression, all we have to do is go in here to edit facial and you can go through here and change, you know, here's, you can grab the eyeballs and you can move the eyeballs around. You can grab these pieces here and you can give him some eyebrow movement here. You can even go into expressions and you can choose an overall expression to start with, maybe uh, disgust. You can go through here and like click through all the disgust. You'll see it got rid of my head rotation. That's easy enough to change. Uh, you can change it to, let's do a, an angry one. He looks like an angry type of fellow. I'm going to scroll down. We'll do one of these angries like so. And then if I want to go back to the head movement, I can use, there's two ways. I can go back to edit pose and move the neck joint around. Or while I'm in edit facial, I can go through here and I can click these on. And I can kind of move the head around like this. So between, the, and here's, you know, more minute eye movement, mouth movement, and even tongue movement if you want. So you again, just click in here and grab and you can move all the stuff around. We can grab, we can do, again, double click to deselect and then grab the chin and you can move, you know, the jaw around. So you can dial in your facial expression. You can also, aside from all that, you can go in here to modify and you can, you know, go in here to just the jaw and you can see jaw open set at 90. You can go through here and you can fine tune uh, that as well. So once you've dialed in the expression, once you've dialed in the uh, body, let's go ahead and close that out. We're ready to send these back to ZBrush. Now remember, these are our low res meshes that we're sending back to ZBrush to repose. Uh, it's our subdivision level one, basically. So there's two ways to do that. Um, if I want, you know, here's my ZBrush file. I do have, if I go in here to Z plugin and drag this over, I do have ZBrush pose tools. If you're new to that, go and watch this video here. It'll take you much more in depth into how to use this to send over arbitrary ZBrush meshes and scale appropriately. We don't need to worry about scale because we started with our CC based topology um, and also saving poses and stuff like that. So we could either come into ZBrush pose tools and we can say, hit this record new pose button. That'll set for all of my sub tools, a new uh, recordable layer that I can record to. If I want to send back multiple poses and like, you know, select between them from my art director. And that's totally cool. Uh, you can also in character creator, go in here to plug in ZBrush pose link and you can send the current pose to ZBrush pose tools and it'll do that automatically. It'll just turn on a new record, uh, record all these changes to a new pose and you can select between different poses. I'm just gonna have a file that I'm gonna call goblin pointing. So all I really need to do in that case is just in character creator. Let's go back in here. We'll go ahead and select all of these objects. We're gonna go Z those back. So just hit that go Z button. We're gonna say relink. And you do want to uh, remember, you know, eyelash and tear ducts, I always separate out for our body. Uh, we'll send over the current pose. There we go. We got our updated file here. He's got his expression on. Uh, if we go in here and we say subtool all high, all of our high res geometry is just being carried along by that low res subdivision level one envelope. There we go. And you'll also notice uh, when I was changing his pose, it looked like a, I lost the cloth deformation. 
All I really need to do in G, uh, ZBrush is I can go back to Ascendant Level 1. I can mask, you know, these areas here. Control tap this. And then just go in here to Dynamics. Uh, let's turn gravity way down. Uh, floor collision off. Gravity on. Run simulation. And if you did have geometry back here you wanted it to collide with, you can turn on collision volume. And then anything that's unmasked, it will eventually collide with geometry. But in our case, I don't need collision volume on. There's really nothing there. So I'm going to go ahead and just say run simulation and let that kind of settle into place. And that'll be my starting point for that cloth. So at this point, I mean, he's not ready to 3D print, but at least you have your high res posed. And then you can go through here, you know, make your minor adjustments. You can go into, you know, Marvelous Designer or whatever and and you know simulate any of this cloth or just go in here and clean up you know some of the muscles based on the new pose whatever you want to do uh, i'll go ahead and open up a file that's already kind of settled in so here you can see uh, we've done the pose we did the facial expression i went through and cleaned up the files i put in little key registration booleans in here so this file is ready to print in fact uh, i have printed this so i may go in detail you know, in another video where we go into, you know, how to clean up your 3D print files and, you know, do all the supports and blah, blah, blah. So we, we, we may do more in-depth 3D printing videos, but I wanted to get, at least give you the workflow for using Character Creator for low-res meshes. Also a workflow to maintain parity between a low-res and a high-res file in case you can use that in your game res workflow, which is doable, um, just a little bit I don't know, might be a little bit of fancy footwork. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Hopefully that's helpful and happy ZBrushing, happy character creating. Uh, keep, keep creating more characters. And like I said, any cool workflow ideas or tips, drop them in the comments. I like to learn as well. And uh, we'll just go from there. In the next video, we'll export some animation from our Rococo mocap suit, throw our character creator character over to iClone, do some motion layer fixes, then use AccuFace to allow us to drive our character's face.